Very shortly after the release of the first Echo Echo Azurak movie, Wizard of Darkness, director Shima Kosato came back, with most of the other staff and lead actress Kimika Yoshino in tow, to give us a follow-up movie, Echo Echo Azurak 2. But rather than just iterating on her last work, Sato decided to shake things up in a prequel, hence the subtitle, Birth of the Wizard. Like I said last time, these movies are based on the manga series of the same name, which... Yes, I don't know how to tell you this, but... There's horror manga that's not by Junji Ito! And they tend to involve the witch transfer student Misa Kuroi using magic, sometimes for murder, and then chanting Echo Echo Azurak. And really, those were the only consistent elements. The manga had little to no continuity, which gave anyone adapting it a lot of wiggle room. Again, I had fun reading it, but I don't recommend it for everybody. Hey, do you think she ever ran out of schools to transfer to? But yeah, the second movie is what I'm rambling about this time. Birth of the Wizard immediately opens with a village being massacred in 1880, and you know it's because some sort of witch stuff was going on. We then cut to the present day where a mummified corpse springs to life and possesses one of the archaeologists at the site. We're not given too much info about this magical body snatcher at first, but it's clear that they're looking for one Misa Kuroi, who's having a house party with some friends, as your average 20-year-old, 15-year-old girl does. After they run out of beer, Misa and her friend Shoko leave to get some more, and we find out that one of the boys there has a little bit of a crush on Misa and- Oh Jesus! So the party gets crashed by this unwanted- <laughs> So the party gets crashed by this unwanted guest who's ready to kill our protagonist when she arrives home. A mysterious man named Saiga saves Misa and reveals that the person who's targeting her is a witch named Kyrie, a citizen of that village that was massacred at the beginning. And a resurrection ritual gone wrong is what led to her becoming this homicidal body-hopping monster, with the intent to steal Miss Kuroi's body and her unlimited magical potential for herself. The rest of the movie sees Misa and Saiga trying to deal with Kyrie, Misa awakening said dormant magic abilities, and guess what her first spell is, and our two protagonists growing closer all the while. The story is moving even further from the source material than the first movie did, which was Sato's goal, but I'm cool with that because it feels more focused this time. It's basically Terminator but with magic. You still get to see lots of people get blood spray killed like before, but now you get two well-developed characters rather than just one. That's twice as many as before. Yeah, there are fewer characters here than in the last movie, and I'd say that's a good thing. Instead of spending half an hour pretending anyone is even going to remember half of these magic death trap victims, Misa's unnoteworthy friends are disposed of, and Shoko gets escorted away in the first 15 minutes, so we can get to the meat of the story, which is Misa and Saiga dealing with Kyrie, pretty much immediately. Kimika Yoshino spent a lot of the first movie running away and screaming, but here it feels way more in character. She didn't know a thing about witches until just a few hours ago, so of course she's scared after seeing so many people die horribly. Saiga develops a good bit over the course of the movie too. This guy that initially seems to be a cold-hearted murderer turns out to have a good deal of kindness buried within. And Wataru Shihodo gives off the impression that deep down he actually does care about Misa. Though the form that caring takes definitely enters some not good territory. Oh yeah, here's another warning. While not as explicit or uncomfortable as the student-teacher relationship in the first installment, the optics of this much, much older man being the implied love interest of a teenage girl that he's been watching from afar since she was very young... Yeah, still not good. I personally believe it's totally possible to enjoy something without endorsing everything that occurs in it, but I still felt the need to give a heads up here. And I can't exactly say, oh, this one actor did good regarding Kyrie, since she's played by a couple different people. But I'd say most of them successfully sell her as this unnatural creature with their body language, constantly shrugging off major injuries and usually chasing our heroes at an off-puttingly leisurely pace. And, you know, Misa isn't this horrible murdering witch in the movie series. But we get to see that sort of character as the antagonist this time, which is cool. I guess the first movie kind of did that too, but I'll take an omnipresent pursuer over a twist villain any day. Given the first movie's success, the sequel's script was written under the assumption that it was going to be given a higher budget than the first. Sadly, this was not the case, and it had more or less the same budget. You could probably already tell from the b-roll I've used, but I think the crew made the most of it once again. 
Like before, the movie's very dark, but everything's still completely visible. You've still got characters dying from rather mundane things, but it's more justifiable here since our antagonist is just utilizing whatever her current body has on them. Also super strength because I guess being a messed up ghost which made her super strong. Yeah, I can roll with it. And also like the first movie, you've got a little bit of cool demon stuff right at the end. I won't even pretend it's a spoiler since it's right on the cover, but yeah, we got a CGI Baphomet this time. I could see a lot of people knocking this effect for clashing with everything else and not being too realistic, but this is a 25 year old movie and it's supposed to be this strange otherworldly ghostly being, so I think it works. It's not as memorable as the Lucifer sequence from the first movie, but it's still pretty sick. A few other spells are shown with similarly old, low budge but acceptable CGI, including a barrier like the one from the first movie. Nice little bit of continuity there. The soundtrack is also in line with the first movie, since it's by the same composer. Oh, Ali Project. I'm not super familiar with them, but I know they've done a few soundtracks, like... Yeah, I haven't watched any of these things. But you still got your sad piano and your scary piano tunes, and I think there may have been a harp somewhere in there. And there's some ominous chanting during a tense scene near the end, and you know me, I just cannot get enough of that weird-ass chanting. A banger, for sure. The song at the beginning with the voice saying Oe is pretty chill, too. You've got a sad little theme with vocals during the end credits. That's pretty nice. So, yeah, not a soundtrack I'd rush out to buy a CD or MP3 of, but it sets the mood just right. I wish I knew how to, like, actually talk about music. So while I think, like the first movie, this prequel isn't really a must-see, this one is a lot closer to that sweet spot. I really didn't like this one the first time around, but now that I've had time to sit on it, yeah, it is pretty good. I think it's an improvement. This would be director Shimako Sato and lead actress Kimika Yoshino's last hurrah with this series, but they were both active in the years following. Apparently Sato directed the cutscenes for Onimusha and Resident Evil Code Veronica. That one isn't super high on my classic RE tier list, but that one part where Claire drops her gun and then shoots all those dudes was really memorable, so yeah, good job. Yoshino's last acting role was quite a while ago, but she stated in an interview released after the fourth movie that she'd be willing to come back for a fifth. She was not taken up on this offer, but if it's still open, I think it'd be cool to see her come back later. So the Echo Echo Azrak series would end up continuing with a new director and cast. I'll be checking out the third movie next time before moving on to other things. See you then! And yet again, it would be cool if you could drop some likes, comments, and subscriptions subscribes, on this video, and give that bell a good old click. And follow my Twitter for occasional updates and me retweeting cool robots and video game stuff. I'll let you know when it's the weekend!